In this tutorial, you'll begin drawing in Illustrator using a series of tools and techniques, including the pencil and pen tools to draw this artwork. So let's jump in. With a document open, you'll start by drawing with the pencil tool and you'll get a feel for it. I'll do a two finger pinch so I can zoom in to the artboard. Now select the pencil tool in the toolbar. Before drawing, you can set path smoothness. 10 for clean curves and one for more precise curves. Set it to around five. To remove the fill, tap fill, and you can see none here. And make sure by tapping stroke that a stroke color is set. Come out and you can draw with your finger or Apple Pencil freely. Start with the bottom of the avocado here. Drag around. And here, if you release to stop drawing, you can actually tap to continue in a straight line. I'll undo that by tapping with two fingers. Come to where you started drawing and tap this point. That makes a straight line and closes the path. To make the stroke color a fill, tap the arrows here to swap them. Now with the path started, it needs a little bit of work. This is where you can switch over to the pen tool to refine a path. Select the pen tool and you can see these anchor points show up along the path. They control the shape of the path. You can actually drag these points and you'll see how it affects the path. Now, when you select an anchor, you can see the direction handles if the path is curved like this. You can drag the end of one of those to reshape the path. Now, if you miss the handle and make a new point, two finger tap to undo, and you can try again. You can tap the path to add more points or press and hold on a point to remove it. Now, you can also edit your shapes in other ways. Select the selection tool and double tap the shape to enter an isolation mode. The direct selection tool is now selected. That means you can edit the individual points that control the shape. You can tap an anchor and delete it using Smart Delete here. And the anchor will be removed, retaining the shape as best it can. You can also simplify a path by dragging across the shape and tapping Simplify here. Even dragging across an anchor and changing it from a corner point like this to a curve and back again. Now, to align these anchor points so that the line here is straight, drag across them. You can then tap the align options and align them to top. There. To move them both, you can then drag one of the anchors. All right, when you're finished, tap done. Now to make the inside shapes. You'll draw a path and you'll use it to cut this shape into two parts. So select the pencil tool again, and to draw a path, Start about here and drag to make a path that looks something like this. All right, to change the fill, you can tap fill and select or mix a color. Now to cut this shape into two using the path you just drew, you're gonna select both of these. So select the selection tool and drag across. In the taskbar, tap combine shapes. You've got the shape builder and pathfinders to work with. The shape builder permanently adds or deletes shapes and pathfinder leaves the individual shapes editable. Tap divide all to divide the avocado shape using the path on top. Now this makes a group of objects so that you can edit them. You need to ungroup them. Tap ungroup here. Now you can remove this leftover path by tapping away and then tapping on it and deleting it in common actions and you've got your two shapes. Okay, let's make the nut of the avocado now. To make the shadow you see here, you'll start with a pencil path again. So select the pencil tool. To make the path really smooth, set the smoothest to 10. Then come out and drag to make a path like this. You'll now use the shape builder to remove this part and cut it out. You need to have the path you just made and the shape underneath selected as well. So select the selection tool, and to select this shape as well, press the touch shortcut and tap it. In the taskbar, tap combine shapes, and this time you'll use shape builder to remove part. So tap shape builder, and normally out here you'll drag across shapes to combine them into one. We want to remove this part of the path. Press the touch shortcut and tap the shape to remove it. When you're finished, you can tap done. Select the path by tapping away and then tapping on it, and you can change the fill in the toolbar. 
Finally, you'll make the nut. So you'll simply draw an ellipse. Press and hold on the rectangle tool and select the ellipse tool. Come out here and drag to make a shape. When you're finished, you can change the fill by tapping fill and selecting a color or making one. I'll go with a brown and drag it into place. Drawing in Illustrator can be fun and really creative. If you want to keep exploring, maybe make the shadow on the nut here. You can draw a path, select the nut and the path, and use the Divide All Pathfinder like you learned earlier. Welcome to Illustrator on the iPad. This is Illustrator, reimagined for the iPad and Apple Pencil. In this tour, you'll see how Illustrator is made specifically for a touch device and stylus. So let's jump in. Your documents are synced to Adobe's cloud right away and auto-saved while you work. I'll tap to go back to the home screen up here, and you can see your cloud documents. That means you can switch from your iPad to your computer and back again without losing anything or having to save or export. I'll tap to open a file I'm working on. Now the workspace on iPad is clean and simplified, so you can focus on your work. On the left is the toolbar with some familiar tools. You can either long press or double tap to see any nested tools. On the right, you'll see the Properties panel and the Layers panel. With content selected, you can see properties like size, position, text formatting, and more. With Layers, to reorder content, you can press and drag a thumbnail. You can rename and delete layers by swiping left. The taskbar you see here is unique to iPad, and where you'll find familiar features like Shape Builder for intuitively combining shapes, Pathfinders that are actually non-destructive on the iPad and even show a live preview of your shapes, and a variety of path and object editing options. And with two fingers, you can use a pinch gesture to zoom in and zoom out, or do a quick two-finger pinch gesture to fit your active artboard in the window. As you make changes, you can tap with two fingers to undo and three fingers to redo. You can see a list of gestures by tapping the help icon here and choosing View Gestures. Now when it comes to creating, the pen tool has been optimized for this touch workspace, but it's just as powerful as desktop. To start with, I'll set the fill, tapping fill and choosing a color. With the pen tool selected, tap to make points, tap and drag for curves. On the iPad, we use the touch shortcut with tools, the circle you see here, like you would command or control keys on desktop. For instance, when you're drawing, to split anchor handles, touch and hold the circle on screen with your finger or thumb for as long as you're using the tool to activate the primary touch shortcut. Touch and hold the circle, then drag your finger or thumb to the ring that appears around the circle for the secondary touch shortcut. In this case, when you're drawing with the pen, it allows you to drag an anchor like this. To see a list of touch shortcuts you can use, you can tap help and choose touch shortcuts. You'll also see keyboard shortcuts for your external keyboard in that menu. Now the pencil has been reimagined for iPad. Before drawing, you can set the smoothing at zero for no smoothing or 10 for the cleanest curves. You can then swipe or drag for a smooth vector line. And if you pause while drawing, the path changes direction, creating a corner. You can also draw straight lines with the pencil tool when you activate the primary touch shortcut or the secondary touch shortcut. I'll tap to undo that. Now if you select artwork with the selection tool, the common actions bar appears beneath it. In it you'll find actions you commonly perform, like arranging content or grouping content. If you double tap a shape or path, you can enter isolation mode to edit the anchors. The direct selection tool is then selected, and you can select an anchor or a series of anchors by dragging. You can smart delete points to keep the path closed, convert anchors, or simplify the whole path or parts of the path and more. You can double tap away from the artwork or tap done to exit. Like on the desktop, you can add text by tapping or dragging to make a text area. You can also adjust typical formatting like size in common actions. There are a lot more formatting options in the properties panel that opens when you create text. Tapping the font menu, you can search fonts by name up here, add your own fonts here, and even browse more fonts by tags to find the perfect match for your project. To take your artwork further, there are a lot of options to help you draw, like repeats. For instance, create half a logo or an icon intended to be symmetrical, and you can apply a mirror repeat to complete the other half. 
You can import a reference image, maybe an initial sketch or a photo that you capture with your camera, or bring them in from different sources, including Creative Cloud files and Photoshop files. When you're finished, you can continue working on Desktop Illustrator using the same cloud document. You can also export to native AI and other formats like PSD. There's a lot to explore and discover in Illustrator. Now that you have a feel for some of the differences between Illustrator on the iPad and desktop, jump in and see what you can create.